feel like got to avoid hitting the table. Huh? Yeah, that, that's bad. Like my arms. That's bad for the podcast if you start hitting the table like that. I'm gonna move in a tiny bit so I can lean. Yeah. There we go. Oh, I look cool. relaxed. You look cool, man. Thank you, mate. I mean, I think that's the first time I've ever said that to you. Well, yeah, because I mean, one, you, we would never sincerely compliment each other. I don't think, and two, that wasn't a sincere compliment. You knew that. You knew I. Bang bang. You knew how yeah. I'd interpret that. Yeah. You knew I'd take it as you didn't mean it. So. Yeah, that's the thing. Even even when even if it is a genuine compliment, I'm never going to take it as well. Exactly. So which you is, really got me over the barrel. I feel like every year since we started like hanging out as friends in like your year twelve, I guess, um, when I was in yeah yeah probably, yeah, probably, yeah I think since then we've been laying down a bedrock amongst yeah. all our friends, which is just like just negativity. You know, just like, you know, no compliments, I hate you, you look stupid. Oh, well, I think a lot of people say you've got to help your, your friends sort of thrive, but I feel like you should beat them to a pulp so that when they do thrive, they appreciate it more. Yeah. And it's, it's really in their own interest. And I also, find. it means that later on, even when you do give a compliment, they know it's not true. So you've, you've, you've set the tone. But even if it is true, like, I want there to always be that doubt. I mean... Mm. I think with me and you, if I, if I came up to you and said, like, oh, I love your outfit, mate. Even if, I'm, even if I meant it, I know there would just be a level <laughs> of self-doubt in you, which meant yeah. you, you would never be happy from anything that I said. And I, I think, I, yeah, I'd be looking at myself in the mirror like, what's wrong with it? Yeah, absolutely. When, like, when I leave, even though I was just using it as, exam as an example, you're gonna, when I leave, you're yeah. going to be standing in front of the mirror, like, even though I wasn't referring to your outfit at all. So this is, a, <laughs> this is the level I want it to get to, and I feel like over yeah. the last few years when... Maybe we've seen each other a bit less often. Mm. It's just mo it's more condensed. It's more brutal in a short yeah, period of yeah, time. Yeah, 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 totally. It's, just to yeah. make up for lost time, really. That's the thing, because I remember when we saw each other like every day at college. It was like you know, you just you just get like the occasional one in there, like oh, you look stupid. Yeah, yeah just a little one, just yeah. pass it, passing each yeah. other on the road between the two buildings. Yeah, 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 totally. And I, I feel like an analogy. Mm. If you want to get a little bit of rock off a mountain. You can either oh pick oh it away, you can pick it away for a while, mm -hmm. or you can just fire a bazooka at it. And I feel these days we're at bazooka levels. We're at bazooka levels. Yeah. Okay, with, with with a nuclear option? Um, not yet. Okay. I think, we, uh, I, think, I think we'd maybe have to go about six months between... See Wait, when did we last see each other? Well, you came to this about apartment. About three months ago, Yeah, it? it's yeah. probably around then, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Oh. Is this a podcast? Is, have we started? Yeah, wait, this is oh, filming. Fantastic. This is definitely part of it. Oh, right. Any context? Um, I feel like every... My all my favorite podcasts that I listen to have zero context. They're just talking. Yeah, and I really like that. I'm happy to do that, but I feel like this was sold to me on the premise of being about music, and I'm fine with it not being about music. <laughs> but I feel like we're not naturally going to get there. Okay, do you know what I mean. Oh, right, okay. Let me ask you a music question then. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, hey, I mean, are, are you going to tell me what the podcast is, or is that are you going to add something? Well, in? okay. So at the start, so what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to record we'll this, so no one has to hear this. <laughs> so no one has to actually. Yeah. No, Wait, I'm not gonna, as soon as I'm out of here, I'm never. You're never just like it. editing the podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I um. It's one of those things where I'm going to do, I'm going to record all these interviews, all these conversations yeah. and sort of like backlog them. Okay. And then every fortnight I'm going to release a, what, release one and I'm going to do a quick intro before I'm going to do like a half an hour intro. Oh, what? Just on my own. Just like half chatting. an hour intro? Yeah, just like, I don't know. Like to, I, what, I, I don't each, know how, I, for each interview? Maybe, maybe, I don't, maybe, maybe 10 minutes, maybe not half an hour, but it's not going to be just like a... Welcome to the podcast. Today we've got Kieran Algo. Bye bye. And then into the podcast, it's going to be like, "Hey, I saw a movie last week. It was good." You know, I don't know. Just like, by yourself, like the ramblings of a madman. Yeah, I'll be Bill Burr. It's going to be great. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's your podcast. You do whatever you want. Yes, yeah. absolutely fine. That's, that's right. Okay, I'm the so, captain right now. Got, so, I'm going to ask you a question to start with. God and damn! Oh like, my god! And it's you like turned interview. the tables on podcasting. Yeah, this is an, an interview technique. If you're ever going for a job, um, I would never know because I've never done one. But I, I assume say. this is a good. When was the last time you had it? I've never had an interview for anything. Oh my god! Really? No, I've never worked a proper job in my life. Did you have an interview for uni? No, with uni. What happened with uni? With uni, I, I was sort of always half. I don't know, I was never fully into the idea of going. Yeah, right. It got to a point where, I think I was in year 13. Oh, no, when do you apply? Like, the end of year 12? And well, it's, it's, the application goes in mid-year 13. You have to apply right. by the 15th of January. But you sort of you sort of have made your mind up, yeah. like, at the start of the year. And 
I was because I was already working at the time. Yeah. I was already doing. I was already gigging musician, and yeah. I was sort of considering not going to uni. I was sort of considering going to uni to study English. Yeah. And I was sort of considering going to uni to like the RNCM or something. Yeah, yeah. I never looked into how easy that would be or if it was possible for me as a mm-hmm. as a fiddle player or folk musician. That um, that's I was gonna say that's that must be the really difficult thing for you because you're you're kinda of stuck between a rock and a hard place where it's like you aren't you're playing an instrument that most people perceive to be like a classical instrument. Yeah. But then I I, I think it's fair to say you don't have like classical chops. No, no, not at all. But I you know. have really good pop chops, but it's very difficult to imagine a fiddle player on like a pop course. Yeah, like the RNCM pop course, they have singers, keys, guitar, bass, and drums. Yeah, and I, th- I think it'd be it, weird to see a fiddle player. Yeah, it, that was always a problem. I think if if there would have been a way around it, and I did ask the RNCM, I think um, if there was a way around me studying on the pop course because the classical course was never would never have been for me. So Fair. studying on the pop course, and if it was me now, I would have gone under the alias of being a guitar playing singer like acoustic guitar yeah, singer right, yeah, yeah. and then got my other instruments in another way but I wasn't really singing at the time I was going to say who would have like overdubbed your terrible sing- sing- wow uh, yeah invite someone yeah I'll come on your first podcast <laughs> Eden I thought we'd left this at the door <laughs> my dad's going to listen to this and he's not going to be happy with you for that comment your dad is in love with me every time I meet your dad he's always so nice well no i tell you what it is Eden I think I think you've got this you're the sort of person who repeatedly tells other people that parents love me like, to everyone. But what it is, what it actually is, is you going into someone's house and just being like obsessively sort of like like Oliver Twist sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little pauper. Oh who's God. like, please, sir, can I have wow. some more love? Any at all? Yeah. Oh God. For reference, my career people who are life. listening or watching. Oh, hey. Um, Just going. Are people going to be able to watch this? I think what I'm going to do is, YouTube. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to upload the podcast with the audio bit of me talking at the start. So that whole like yeah, hour, yeah. hour and a half long thing onto Apple Podcasts and everything. And then else. just this bit. Just this bit on YouTube. Okay. Just as like an extra. Oh, mate, you'll be raking in the hits. Do you All think? my fans, thanks for watching. So that's like three old people in Kent. Mate, let's not get into it. I don't know why I'm shots. Can I just say, I was going to ask you this earlier. I don't know why I'm shots firing against folk where well, yeah, you're I gonna, play jazz. You know yeah, what I mean? You're like, going to get me in trouble here. You've got to remember that whatever you say <laughs> is going to end up in one of the folk magazines, as in like <laughs> Kieran Algor did nothing to deny this comment. I mean, I, 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 I've done Broadstairs Folk Festival quite a few times in Kent. I've done it with you. I, I oh, you, yeah, we did. When, when oh, you did that your was, solo album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a, an experience. Yeah. I, I tell you what, that's that has been something that's we'll we'll talk more about uni and whatever. But like, yeah. I, I find it's really interesting every time I've ever played with you, because obviously you did your solo album, yeah. and then we did that sort of like not really at all, but like we did a few places. I remember thinking like, there's a job lot of people here, like you know, it, it's not like, you know, it's you know, it's just the cat. It's yeah. not it's not like a concert tour, but it's like you're doing theatres and like you know big festivals and stuff. Like there are a lot of people turning up. Yeah, it, it's weird because at that stage when I did that album, um, when was that? It was like 2014, 2015. 2015 so we were gigging yeah. in 2015. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say I didn't put enough preparation into the, into the gigging side of things. Like there wasn't a mm. lot of rehearsal or whatever. And it was sort of, like it was great because we had like everyone it was incredible musicians. So there was you, there was Thank you. Giles Deacon who's now on the West. No, what, no what, Giles no, he's is in China. At the he's moment, currently in China, nailing the cats, yeah. Yeah, touring cats. Yeah. Um, and there's Sam Kelly and there was Toby Shea I mean Sam Kelly he did lose to a dog right mate we've got to stop we've got to stop <laughs> having digs at like <laughs> I, I can say that times of <laughs> that's like picking on my little brother yeah, well, right, yeah even though he's older like considerably he's on the way out now I'm still young I'm still fresh mate. you're saying this you're saying no I'm this. allowed to say this <laughs> I'm, I'm not a, okay so, I'm allowed to say yeah, this I'm so not in the club you're casting the aspersions that I would prefer to cast. Mm. That's I'll tell you what that's like. Yeah. That's like say who does a podcast? Who who are some famous like Joe Rogan. So that's like Joe Rogan yeah. having in Chris Eubank <laughs> to his show. Thank you for having me. No, that was <laughs> So it's like it's, it's, it, it, <laughs> what? was that your Chris Eubank? The Eubank call is this bit Okay, let's move on. So he's got Chris Eubank yeah, on. So he's, okay. got, he's got Chris Eubank on. And what 
Joe Rogan is doing is just insulting Chris Eubank Jr. And whereas mm. he's allowed to ask the questions where Chris Eubank will then say, oh yeah, he's weak at this. He's not Wait, what good. happened to the accent? What happened to the, the voice? He's not the strongest punch in the world. <laughs> That wasn't that bad. That wasn't, that was, it wasn't horrendous. There was there've been worse ones. Yeah. You bank warrior code. <laughs> I'll stop that. I'm getting mixed up with Greg Davis's impression. That's the thing. Whenever yeah. I think about it, I always think about Greg Davis's they impression. Reflect them on the features. <laughs> that was Greg Davis's. Was so good. Yeah. Well, I was because they brought him on. Do you remember the episode? Oh, oh yeah. it was where they actually brought him on, yeah. and it was just like he's just like eyes under the table. So yeah, I can insult like yeah. these people. Yeah. But you just encouraged me to. Right. Okay. Rather than yeah, I'm you're not, not doing the hitting. You're ordering it. Okay, fair. So I'm okay. okay. I'm sat in the in the the war room, ordering the assault on Vietnam. So anyway, you're yeah. Private. So anyway, we're doing these gigs. Or are you the Viet Cong? So we're doing these gigs. Yeah. And um, yeah. So the folk scene is. I've just moved cleanly off that and the. You really have. That's. I mean, we, we took quite the detour. We really did. But. The, the folk scene's got a very loyal audience and the thing is we did I think most of the gigs we did were festivals I think I think all of them were yeah, the first one was mm, Theatre by the Lake in Keswick yeah the one in Keswick it was, but yeah. that was part of like a weekend festival yeah and I think there was an act on afterwards wasn't there yeah like, from America or something were they or they were just quite big I think I can't honestly I can't remember think, yeah I don't remember but um, so yeah a lot of people will go to most of the folk festivals. Yeah. So it's why if you go from festival to festival of a certain type of festival, there'll be similar numbers and similar people. Yeah. And they will go to everything. And if they like you, they'll come and see everything you do. Yeah. Um, and in the, in the last couple of years, for the first time, especially with the Lost Boys, it's got to a point where if we do a gig at a festival or at a venue, we know it's going to be pretty much full. Yeah. Because we've got to a point where a sort of level on the folk scene where it's not a concern really mm. I mean obviously we're, do, we're doing some gigs in, in December and you might have one gig that's not selling as well and that's that's sort of part of the course occasionally that'll happen but the difference between when we were doing those gigs and now is that the audience was there for the festival and for the other acts it was on as well it was like that yeah. was the main concert whereas yeah, yeah. with the Lost Boys nowadays it's like people are actively coming to see us which, yes. is, which is great it's sort of the same with Greg as well and um, the Tweed Project, which is a new band I'm doing, that is yeah, I've seen, I've seen you post yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah. sort of in the stages we were at, where people are coming along to see what. Oh, I wonder what this is. Yeah. Rather than I know I want to see that. Yeah. And hopefully, we take that and push on next year and start becoming mm. like the Lost Boys. Do people like explode onto the folk scene? Do you ever get like a, a new band that's like, whoa, everyone's checking this person out? Because you know, you have things. Because I mean, obviously, you say that with festivals. I mean, ever since. For example, I always think about um, the two breakouts from Glastonbury this year was probably Lizzo and um, Idols. Yeah. And since then, everyone's like, "Oh my God, let's talk about these guys." Yeah. Like, you know, um, I, I, do you think has there ever been any time where there's been a folk festival and there's been a new band on and it's been unanimous? Okay, these guys are big now. Which no. does not really work like no. that. Does um, it? I think the first part of that can be the case where at one festival. I mean, let's take Cambridge for example. Cambridge is is one of the biggest in the UK. Probably, yeah, it's pro like, it's probably I've the, heard of before. Yeah, probably the it? biggest folk festival. Yeah. So, it happened a few years ago with a band called Dahl Inside. Okay. This American band, the American band, and they were filling in for someone on the main stage, I think. And it was just an early afternoon spot, but they went down. Just I've never I've never seen anything like it because I was wasn't at the festival. And I was hearing people talk about this one gig at Cambridge right. sort of for months afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's very rare. And then they, it sort of mm. establishes them on the UK folk scene because they're already on the American folk scene. But on the folk scene in general, you can go down really well at a festival to the audience in front of you. Yeah. But because there's so many different niches in the folk scene and different things people are into specifically, yeah, there's, there's no way of universally just appearing... I mean, the Lost Boys probably had one of the bigger, one of the quickest jumps up because we did, I think we did a year where we did five or six festivals and were sort of mid billing at all of them because we were a seven piece band and obviously that cost money to get into. Yeah. But then we were going down so well, so well. But Sam had already been building this momentum before we were a band. Yeah. And 
I think the year after that we started we were put onto headlining festivals and things but it sort of stops there really it's not mm. you can't really explode onto the folk scene because there's not an infinite amount to move into yeah totally so that's, like, yeah. you headline Glastonbury or you, you come out of Glastonbury and have this amazing gig then suddenly you get in Radio 1 play yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. headline other festivals yeah. and then you know, making albums that are selling millions and then it just there's no there's really no end to what you can do no the, well I mean you eventually sort of like well you'll, you'll, yeah. you'll plateau but there's no end to the longevity of it well, Where, yeah, I mean, yeah. If we Celine Dion, Celine Dion is still selling out arenas. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. Whereas, with, and with the folk scene, there is a longevity as well. Yeah. But it's just a, a much lower level. Mm. I mean, occasionally people will break through onto the mainstream a bit. So we had Seth Lakeman, who was nominated for the Mercury Prize. Yeah, a few, uh, years ago. Would it would be fair to say Bellowhead or are they? Yeah, Bellowhead broke yeah. onto the mainstream. Yeah, because yeah. uh, they went on Jules Holland, didn't they? Went on Jules Holland, and yeah, they were selling out. So now really big venues from like a folk yeah. point of view. And even not even a folk point of view, they're selling, selling hundreds of tickets a night, maybe even thousands, I don't know. Yeah, but, probably, probably. Yeah, but they're not around anymore. And are they, are they just stopped or are they just... Yeah, they broke up, broke oh, up a couple of years ago. And it, like there's Kate Rusby yeah. who got played on like a Brian Cox show. And it's, there's people who will break through and on the folk scene, they will be considered the celebrities or the, right. the big deals yeah, but yeah, yeah. you put that's in that little f pond yeah, that and you take that big fish into a much bigger pond it doesn't really translate what do you think then of because there are bands that oh, you know, I was going to say Mumford and Sons mm. but I guess Mumford and Sons are they're pop really that would just happens to be that they have folky stuff in the background well I I've uh, I always have an, an issue with it, not but not because of them. I find the argument that they're not folk, or the how keen people are to say, of oh, these aren't folk, because I find that a problem. Oh, good point. Because right, yeah. so take right take um, myself and Greg. Yeah. We're sort of we're not the most traditional. Greg Russell and Kieran Algar, yeah. uh, two-time winners of the BBC Young per Person of the Year. Well, you'll be putting this in the intro anyway, so I don't need to say that. <laughs> Will I? Yeah. Well, you've got half an hour to fill. <laughs> so we've got Greg and I, who aren't aren't the most traditional, but aren't the most contemporary either. Yeah. And then you've okay. got move along quite a bit, and then you've got Bellowhead. Yeah. Move a bit along from there. You're not far off Mumford and Sons like in terms of in instrumentation, no, and yeah, the yeah. style and the sound. So I see it as, and you move along from there and you start getting into the pop and rock stuff. Yeah. So dismissing Mumford and Sons is not a folk act. Fine, like, by definition they're not. I don't think. Although I suppose, it depends how you look at folk music, because folk music is just the stories of people. Yeah, yeah. And they're not singing the traditional songs, but they're singing stories about people. So mm. that's a different argument. Yeah, but yeah. If you've got someone who's into the pop music, and then they get into Mumford and Sons think, oh, this is all right. Yeah. Then that person could go, oh, Bellowhead. Oh, I, I quite like this. And, I, yeah. I, and they would never have heard it otherwise. No, totally. And it's sort of, it's got to be a chain of bringing people into it in this sort of game because you can't just expect to keep making the same traditional sort of music yeah. and suddenly someone will go, oh, we're going to make this mainstream. Yeah. Never going to happen. And it's not going to survive without that. I thought that's, that's a really interesting point. So maybe it would be more appropriate to label Mumford and Sons as folk because then it's like oh if that's folk what else is folk and then you might look into this so if you get into yeah. it you might see all the folk stuff and get into it kind of thing yeah uh, I don't, maybe the label of folk by itself isn't the best label sort of indie folk maybe or yeah. fo not really folk rock because that's got other connotations yeah, like yeah. barefoot convention and things but yeah. just not dismissing when people listen to them and say oh they're folk that, that's more what I mean it's not their own labelling on what they do it's the way people will be discouraged from saying that they're folk yeah. like and so many young people I know like at school and college and stuff were like oh Mumford and Sons are a folk band aren't they yeah. and I would just say yeah because why would you be so protective over what you think is folk that you would put people off investigating it and discovering it and yeah, that's yeah, yeah that's a really good point and there's also, a lot of that on the folk scene there's, you know what though mate there's a lot of that on like because the two I mean two of the scenes that I'm kind of involved in are like jazz and then contemporary classical yeah. and it's such a similar thing like you talk to like relatives 
you know, relatives, like not even not even friends, like relatives, people who like yeah. love you unconditionally. And you say like, oh yeah, like um, I'm writing this music for a symphony or something or for a short film. And, and they'll be like, yeah, but are you gonna play Glastonbury? And it's like, uh, it's not, it's such a different world, but the problem yeah. is, is those steps to get there are so invisible. Because to me, the way you get into like, so uh, modern uh, contemporary composers, people like Steve Reich, I guess, but then also like George Crum and Zanakis, people like that. So like people who I, I think are sort of yeah. heroes, Harrison Birtwistle as well and Thomas Adder. The way you get to listen to them is you start off by watching like Star Wars and listening to that music. Yeah. And then you maybe go, oh, I'll go watch that in concert. And they just happen to put some like Beethoven in there as well. And yeah. then you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. Let's listen to some like, Strauss and stuff. Oh, there's some 20th century stuff. Holes and then and then eventually, yeah. you get all the way up to the really weird, weird, crazy stuff that they're making now. But and same with jazz. Like with jazz, you go see the Incredibles, and then you're like, oh, that sounds just like this Benny Goodman album. Oh, that yeah. sounds a bit like Miles Davis. That sounds a bit like John Coltrane. That sounds a bit. Dis- and then eventually you get to like yeah. Mark Giuliano today. But those steps, there's so many steps, and people just don't want to take those steps. Well, there's, there's a similar thing when you talk about the classical. Um, and I, I, it's not really my scene, mm. and. But I can appreciate it how sort of special it is and how important it is to a lot of people. But the one person who I got into, and I feel he's got a similar reputation to classical musicians as um, Mumford and Sons have to folk musicians, is I, I know it. Yeah, completely. Because yeah. I've seen so many people on Facebook sort of slating I know it and saying, yeah. oh, this isn't classical or it's not complicated or it's, it's easy and it's sort of I don't know, just immature mm. classical music. Yeah. But that's the first thing that I heard. I remember when I first heard it, I journey, I was on a school retreat. Yeah, yeah. And it was like one of these meditation things. You know yeah. the footsteps with God thing? Oh. Where right. they're like, and why were there one set of footprints in the sand? That's when I was carrying you. Yeah, I right, played yeah, the, yeah. God's yeah. voice and that was on just, the- Just for reference, by the way, we went to like a super Catholic. Yeah, school, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. But I mean, that, that retreat was amazing. Which but, retreat was it? Oh, it was St. Cassian's, I think. That was like when I was in year 11. St. Cassian's yeah. did I go to that uh, I doubt it it wasn't a compulsory one no I don't think I did no, no. it was really it was really I cool. heard about it though. I've heard people say but, it was good yeah and it, just after this little strange meditation thing then they put Igeone on and I just remember thinking this is beautiful this yeah. is, I mean it's it's not pushing the boundaries of anything mm-hmm. but it's not really nice and then yeah. I remember that was played by Greg James on radio on radio one sort of in the days afterwards strangely and that would then I hear classical music after that sort of more of the stuff that people would yeah, yeah. Um, describe as proper classical music and I found it more accessible Yeah. and I feel like people, I understand people are passionate about the things that they're passionate about like classical and folk and jazz but you can't be so protective over it that you can't allow even a little deviation from what yeah. you expect because that will, it will die. It will, yeah, it will it'll all totally die, die out, like, and yeah. it will not interest anyone unless we have people being these bridges and these stepping stones back to what you know and love. Totally, and uh, you're absolutely right. And I, I think the problem that y- y- you look at Ian Audi, and you, and I think the I think actually it, it's less snobbery and more jealousy. I yeah. think I think a lot of contemporary classical musicians are like oh you can just you can play on radio one yeah like the like, money the he, money he's made in he's made loads of money oh how ridiculous you know it's the same reason a lot of contemporary concert composers don't like film composers you know because right. film composers can make music that yeah. millions of people will hear whereas some contemporary classical composers there's like 50 people in a room and that's and it it's the idea that sort of with the film composers it's like watered down it's sort of like sometimes diluted. although then you get people like John Williams and Johnny Greenwood who are making and, and to be fair Thomas Adders did the score to Colette recently as well so like there are some incredible film scores but then at the same time it's, it, it's, like, it's not the snobbery of it being watered down it's more like oh they got successful right and it must be because they're bad oh that'd be yeah that's the same in everything I, I see a lot of this with in the sing-songwriter scene like yeah. the bitterness towards people like Ed Sheeran yeah um, yeah yeah, it, it, it is all, it all, it all stems down to that really. Um, it's people not wanting these people to be more successful than them mm. and they can't take it well when they do. I'm just going to move my phone because that's very unprofessional. Uh, mate, to, to be fair, there's like a kettle in my 
That's true. Yeah, this we is. Should, we should do a tour of your kitchen afterwards, I reckon. Yeah, it's very eclectic. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I literally can't believe I'm doing this in a kitchen. What, what's wrong with me? Why? Well, you live here. Yeah, I know, but like, I could have like hired a studio or. No. Oh, like. Nah. nah. Nah, okay, cool. This is there, there's definitely more of a like a homespun vibe. This podcast is brought to you by Borleycon Concertinas. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to play the concertina? Well we've got the concertina for you. <laughs> I thought Borleycon Concertinas. Is that that's the whole That's the ad break. That's the ad break. Yeah. Um Is that right? Have we been talking for an, an hour and twenty minutes? No, twenty six minutes. Yeah, but there's like a few minutes at the start. That's crazy if we have. No, it's only been 24 minutes according to that. Yeah, I know it's only been 24 minutes. I don't know what that's on about. I was lying. This, this is going to be edited out, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Okay, yeah. Because um, that was really dull. <laughs> that was super dull. Yeah, um, yeah that's... Um, so I enjoyed your adverts for concertinas. Thank you. It's very good. Concertinering yeah. is yeah. a noble art. Oh, yeah. Only the finest people can concertina. So, um, moving on, um, I wanted to, so let's go back to uni, um, because... <laughs> I'd love to, mate. It's too old, yeah. <laughs> too, old. too old. Mate, I'm doing a master's, it's not no too old. Um, you, the, the idea of you being a master of anything terrifies me. What? Like. Why? What's wrong with... I, I've got knowledge. I, oh, just anyone who's listening to this who knows you, <laughs> just the idea that you will be a master of... What will you be a master of? Composition. Composition. Yeah. Uh, that that's more you'd hope it would be like drumming or even just like master of drumming master or master of just like rhythm master just, of rhythm yeah well, I played the band with me I don't think you're ever going to get that one. Oh, ah, <laughs> I shot was fired playing a uh, what's it called the Ma can't remember can't remember no what the I'm trying to think of, I was trying to think of a song but I can't remember what it's called wait what's the oh no do do primary or what was the because we had the big three. Oh, the trilogy the holy oh, trilogy the, the holy, holy trinity. trinity was it called the holy trinity yeah no it, the power three I think we, it's been called both yeah and then the, there was uh, the tri- do 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 oh do do yeah the uh, virtual insanity virtual insanity uh, runaway baby what do we start with? Uh, superstition. Superstition, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was cracking. That yeah. was such a great arrangement. Yeah, we were in a band called Perfunction. The name the, trademark the, the, here in Algarve, by the way. Yeah, I, I, so we were coming up with this band to play funk uh, functions. Yeah. Funk and functions. Fun, yeah, funk at functions. So it yeah. was, it was. I took the word perfection, Yeah. put funk music in it, yeah. put function in it, yeah. for function. And um, I only ever did one gig with the band. Oh my God, did you actually? We never did a gig with the proper lineup. Ever. Because who was, who else, who jo- was... Uh, George did the one that I did. Which one did you do then? At the wedding. It was a wedding. Oh, um, Tom Atwood's cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Are like, we allowed to, like, talk about people? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we, we we did this funk band. And I think, what, was it, it was only you guys were year 13, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'd just gone into college, and pretty much my whole year 12 experience was, like, dedicated to this band. Like, yeah. <laughs> going to rehearsals, we'd yeah. hang out and do yeah. stuff. And Every, was, like, Saturday, wasn't it? Yeah. Saturday age, yeah. And I think the thing the thing that I realise, looking back on that now, is I never cared about gigging it, really. Like, I was just having mm. the best time. Yeah. Like, yeah. making music and just hanging out with my mates as well. Yeah. Um, I, wish we'd, I wish we'd done more with it, because we were good. We, we you know what? Good. We were actually good. I mean, we had we had Lisa Oliver on vocals, incredible. who was just absolutely fire, and then we had like Giles on the keyboard. Yeah, who, incredible. He is incredible. I, what I love about Giles and that band was he started because I started the band. Yeah. And then I was like, oh yeah, Giles, can you come play for it? And then within like a month, because you know Giles, he became like the boss man. Like he was like oh, sending no. out all the emails. Oh, he no, was in charge no. of rehearsals. Well, let, let's not pretend that's about Giles. It's because of the fact that you wouldn't do any of that, Aiden. <laughs> I do, that, I, I stemming think stemming back to being a master or anything. I think it stems from Giles not trusting me too, and for a good reason. I I'm not the most. You're not changed at all. You're not improved with that side. I like to think I have, but well, you've got your own place now. You've got a cat. Yeah, I'm seeing mar- marked improvements. Okay, I'm got marked. 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 You know what? With the Ed on the yeah. like learn Ed, because remember, do you remember the our school song? Oh mate, devotions we've earned Ed. Learned, like, yeah, learned, and it's like it's not learned. L- learned. Yeah, it's one of those things where if someone said, "Oh, to you, oh, he's very learned," 
you'd think they were a bit of an idiot. But mm. but I think if you say market, what I can't remember what I was talking about. Anyway, yeah, Giles, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had Giles. Then we had Sophie and Ed on wins, who were both awesome. Yeah, but I mean, inviting um, the wind before inviting me on the guitar, sort of. Yeah, because I, I got. Still I, a sore so point there, were, for you, there were two. That... There were two rival funk bands in our college. Oh my god, there was. We had, we had, we had dual funk th- bands. What was yeah. it like? It was, it was sort of like. Have you watched Freaky Blinders at all? I have not watched. It's sort of like just two rival gangs yeah. who initially were brothers. Yeah. That's what, I, oh yeah. no! I tell you what it's like. It's like Adidas and Puma. Do you know the story then? I can't. Yeah, vaguely. Yeah, yeah they yeah. were bro- They were the Adidas. Uh, what was his name? Adolf Dassler and right. his brother. Yeah. And they were the same company, Adidas. Yeah. And I think then after the war, they broke off and became right. two companies. Right, so okay. we had two funk bands. Yeah. And I was in both of them for a time until I got kicked out of the other one whilst I was having a bath which was still one of the darkest moments of my life that's quite a sad moment for you but um, I mean Lisa was in both Lisa was in both yeah, yeah. Um, I and I did play I think it was only one gig but I did play a gig with, with Funky oh, no, I, played two, I played two oh, gigs yeah. Yeah. I did one with them yeah I did one with both bands <laughs> but I um, yeah I got added to this Facebook group asking me if I was interested and I don't think you realised I could see the previous messages that yeah. said so, so someone was suggesting me to play guitar and you were like yeah but we could try this person or yeah. no I think I well because the thing is when I started the band I had in mind and then wrote do we even need a guitar that's the thing I was thinking do we need a guitar I didn't know yeah. how yeah and I know yeah, yeah, yeah I know yeah. now I think about it I think yeah of course we do oh, but I don't, it wasn't anything it wasn't like it genuinely from the bottom of my heart wasn't like I don't want Kieran in this band oh no I know I just found it hilarious making you think that that's what I thought yeah I know I, I couldn't like, care less yeah I, that's the thing you're the most like un unemotionally broken by people's words person <laughs> uh, Let well, me I'm sorry I'm going to have to process that for <laughs> a second <laughs> like, like if I was to take the take the mick out of you you'd be like yeah whatever yeah it, it depends who it is yeah yeah if it's me you know like I'm I'm both extremes I'm either if it's someone like I have banter with yeah then like water off a duck's back yeah if it's someone who I don't know too well or it's someone that I know doesn't really banter like that then it, it's Ooh, completely the opposite yeah yeah completely yeah, yeah. Opposite. I'm not really a sort of I, I wish I was like that mm. I wish any people could say anything to me I was like oh, I don't care yeah but especially with like making music I find like yeah. any criticism or like from other people outside it yeah that can be it can hurt yeah un- un- unless I don't it sound bad, sounds bad unless I don't respect the source yeah, like, yeah. we had this the last duo album we had this one review and all of the others and, and fair play to them because a lot of folk reviews mm. are let's find all the positives and just put them in oh okay and it's very rare there'll be any criticism and if there is criticism of a, of a folk artist in a review yeah then they will like share that on their Facebook and say oh how ridiculous is this and oh, all really? of their people in that bubble are like oh ridiculous all this even when they've got a point right um, but there's this one review Greg and I had and the guy obviously just did not care about what we thought at all which in some ways I prefer that honesty as yeah, opposed to but there was a couple yeah. of things the only things I couldn't take were when he was sort of talking about like instrumental technique or whatever and I was like there's no way this person I looked him up and it's like there's no way you know these things yeah. better than we do yeah Come and on. that's the only thing I can take for, and even anyone even if you're not a musician and you sort of have a, a criticism about a track because oh it's a bit jarring or whatever that's absolutely fine yeah. like that, that is a fair criticism even if someone doesn't understand music but it's when someone challenges you on the technicalities yeah that's when you start getting a bit like mm. it's like whenever I've shown like a composition or someone to like a family member yeah and then who, do, who doesn't know anything about music and then they've gone like oh I feel like there could be more of a like they, then they start running around terms like crescendo yeah and stuff like that and you're like yeah. you don't know what that means. although I've, over the last few years I've definitely realised that I've because I was always in the mindset of I'm a musician like no one knows better than me because oh that's a dangerous no, not, as, not, yeah. not as in other musicians no right just yeah. if, I, if I was playing stuff to the normal person like even just a song by in the charts or something I would give myself an authority like just in the yeah. car listening to it and they're saying oh I don't really like this or oh I like this bit hmm. and I'd 
if I disagreed, it would be, well, I'm right because I'm a musician. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. really had, I, I realised what I was doing and sort of like, that's got to get out of that because sometimes they are right or they yeah. give you a different perspective on things that, because we're all set in our ways as musicians, I think, most yeah, of the time. Totally, yeah. And it's nice to hear other people's input, even if it's not from a qualified position. It doesn't need to be in music. There's also, I mean, yeah, I mean, to be fair, I mean, I don't know if you'll know much about like people like Adorno, but there are plenty of like... Oh, I can't get enough love that guy but there's plenty of like isn't that an ice cream Adorno is there an ice cream called Adorno mm. I don't know. he was he was like just a German a, music just a little critic. joke was, I loved it oh is he the one in The Greatest Showman what there's a critic in The Greatest Showman yeah you know it's funny I saw that the Greatest Showman? I saw it three times and I don't rem- I don't remember the plot this is a film critic who's played by the guy in House of Cards who is getting with the prime in, the president's wife oh yeah the president's um, wife that you mean the really, president's really game good. with the president that's have you really, not seen series that, 6 Jesus Christ let me do my impression Eden <laughs> okay. really is quite sure you put together Mr. Barnum that guy yeah. I remember that guy because he yeah he plays the novelist yeah, he's the novelist he, in he's House Cards yeah he's quite big in The Great Showman yeah yeah I doesn't remember. he call him what does he call him the, uh, oh, I, I, I yeah, he write, writes the article and everyone, and, he, and yeah, and then he gets like, on his hat like Prince of, Prince of was he Prince oh. of M- tricks? No. Oh, he, yeah, he sort of like invents a term. Yeah, Prince of. I can't remember. Ah, uh, yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. Um, I do know what you mean. I why am I, why am I talking about him? Oh yeah, that was my joke. Yeah, sorry, carry on. So that was that was just a little aside. Just a joke about yeah the name of Dorman. just because it was a, a critic. There are plenty of music critics who don't know what they're on about. Yeah. And there are plenty of music critics who do know what they're on about. So how do you tell? And I think the problem is, is you need to also give credit to people. Because the thing is, if you if you want to if you want people to have opinions about your music, you've got to listen to their opinions about music at large. Yeah. I don't think music should be created in a vacuum. I think like a lot of music is and a lot there's a lot of like kids who play in bands. So for example, like um I remember when I was at um at school and I remember playing in a band um, and we were like post hardcore pop punk what, which band was this? Um, Cities That Sleep so they were oh, both yeah. from, they were both from said, like, I went to school you're talking as if I didn't go to school no no yeah, yeah, no, yeah this yeah. was when I, when I was in like year 11 right, or 12 yeah. and like I remember like we because we would listen to that music and, and especially those two other the two other people in it were really into that music yeah. I was like oh yeah this is great music this is great music and then you're like wait none of my friends listen to this music none of my friends are going to turn up to these gigs like because it's it's just such a vacuum because yeah. this music is music from west coast america from the 90s right we're not adding anything new it's just very in a vacuum and i think a, a lot of bands are from that a lot of artists suffer from that and i think you need to be wary of what people want a bit i think you know and yeah. that's that's the line but that the problem uh, let me qualify this for saying pop music has has walked that tightrope too well and so yeah. now they only make stuff they know people want to hear. Well, they they make people want something. Yeah, they totally. Tell people yeah. what they want. Yeah, they're like, yeah. You've, you, of course you like this person, and we just play them on Radio 1. Yeah. You know, like that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Um, and you have things like Spotify top playlists. Yeah. And it's like, how do they get on that playlist? You know, like, there, there are yeah. still gatekeepers. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, I think you need to listen to audiences, definitely. Yeah. I, it's what is, yeah. In in, a gener- in general terms, like my, what I think of music is no more correct than what someone who's never touched an instrument thinks of music. Mm. On a technical level, it is. Yes. But not as in, well, I can't pick what's good or not because no. everyone obviously it's so subjective. And when it comes to like the reviewers and stuff, like they can be so amateurous on the folk scene just reviews that uh, there's, there's one source in particular but reviews where they get names wrong they get facts wrong oh wow. and, oh no I've seen you post that on Facebook sometimes make, yeah, yeah I'm like, obviously not going to say anything you but could, you could say this is a platform to no, out these people no no like they must they must know what they're doing because yeah it, and also just sometimes blatant cases of sexism where there was one review where there's this great artist called Kitty McFarlane okay. I don't know I don't know if you ever met her I feel like I have I can't remember but she's she's amazing she's yeah. so good she was up, she's on the album on my solo album yeah 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 and well, obviously that's not the pinnacle of a career she's like doing incredible things now <laughs> but there's this one review and 
there was this really nice bit of guitar she was doing, but because like this reviewer saw that Sam Kelly was on the album as well, and just assumed that every nice bit of guitar he could hear was Sam. Right. Which yeah. and it, it didn't say anything like that on the on the booklet or anything. Yeah. That was purely an assumption that this guy had made. And things like that are so common in the folk scene, especially with, with female artists, are accused mm. of being like too girly or whatever, or all really? these things. And yeah, a lot of a lot of people reviewing have no idea what they're talking about. Like, there, there are some great platforms. Mm. Like there's a thing called Folk Radio UK, which is absolutely brilliant. And you can tell that when there's a review, this person has sat down and listened to it properly. Yeah, they've really explored how that how it made them feel the technicalities they've got the facts and it really is like i'll just review re- reviews of albums that i've not heard or have nothing to do with or don't know about yeah, yeah because yeah. they're so well written and they can sell it sell you an album mm. but a, a lot of a lot of things are just sort of half-assed like oh we've got to fill we've got to fill a page on the website here yeah. don't particularly care about this person or yeah. their music but I'm, I'm here i'm just going to write out what i know about each of these songs and that's the point where it becomes pointless. What do you yeah. think about the? Because I, I was just thinking to myself about reviews. Like I went to the Fringe Festival. Yeah. Right. I go every year. It's awesome. And um, on the Fringe website, they've got this kind of like, just anyone can leave a review. And at the end of every show, they're always like, "Please leave a review." Um, and so because of that, every single show is reviewed by just everyone. Um, what do you think about that? democratization I guess of reviewing like would you rather it be like people who are experienced reviewers and know how to like properly form an article and what like a show I was doing yeah that's yeah or or even an album would you rather have you know people just you know write saying you know they're just the common person just writing it would you rather have like a proper review what makes you feel um, better I don't know I I think it depends on a lot of things but the, the idea of someone who's just a, a fan or not a fan, like a general music fan, yeah, listening to it and reviewing it, I think would probably have more merit than someone who's classing themselves as a folk reviewer would have. Yes. Because a folk reviewer is sort of, not all of them, and yeah, I know people, some people might listen to this and think I'm talking about them, I'm not, not all of them by any means, but it's sort of a self-appointed importance a yeah. lot of the time. Mm. It's not people who've been musicians on the folk scene. Mm it's not people who can be held to account if they say something ridiculous really yeah because like, at the end of the day it's not like millions of people are reading these things it's just like a mild annoyance but they sort of a few of them obviously love the idea that they can they're essentially casting judgment on an album in yeah. their eyes yeah yeah and it just it comes across it can come across as false and just like completely insincere whereas if you gave a folk album to just someone who goes to folk festivals and yeah say, just write what you think about this they wouldn't be going from any angle they wouldn't have any agenda they wouldn't be mm, they wouldn't have self-importance yeah they just say oh i like this or mm. i'm not too keen on this but it's not my thing so that's fine yeah and appreciating that they're coming at it from a view of maybe it's not my thing yeah, whereas, or, or this is my opinion. Yeah, this whereas, is how I feel. Yeah, folk reviewers a lot of the time don't do that. Right, they, there's they come from the view of the folk scene, like I am. The how folk does scene. this fit within the right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And no one can make that judgment. Hmm. So yeah, you'll see like varied review. Like an album that goes down really well in one publication will be slaughtered in another. Yeah, right. it's really like hard to tell. That, yeah. In which case, that kind of makes it weirdly an even playing field because it's like, oh yeah, well I got even if it got half and half good bad reviews it's like well that kind of proves it doesn't it that proves that it's at least going to make people think something or yeah something. yeah it's polarizing yeah yeah and you know that yeah i completely agree yeah and just my last thing on reviews um, on. there was there's one publication um which has like a page for they'll have like they'll review 20 or 30 albums like with like little chunks and whatever hmm. And then there's one page where they'll put the names of all these other albums and just a thumbs up, a thumb sideways, or a thumbs down. And that is such a massive it's so de- spectrum. It's, it's so demeaning. And have like, you ever had an album in that? Bit? No. Oh, okay. Luckily, but I know people who have. Like, yeah. like it's people like my mate Luke Jackson, who is incredible, and I think Blair Dunlop, who's like he's great. He was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. 
But he had, I think he had an album in this one section. And just the idea that someone's put a year or two years of work into this album. At least, if you don't like it, yeah, don't... It's so disrespectful to take it and put it in this one little... You'll put one line about it. Yeah, yeah. Usually the editor being particularly cutting about it if it's got a thumbs down. Yeah. Just don't bother. Yeah, just don't, don't bother anything. doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Take that page out, take the ones you like and review them. Mm. There's no point deliberately like be putting these snide comments on. And I've always wanted to say that, so that's why I put that in there. That's good. I, they yeah. know who they are and they, they don't exist anymore. So. Oh, that's good. I, w- I would rather it was like a, just a list of like new albums like instead of like having like yeah. a thumbs down thumbs side it's just a page full of like if you can't yeah. be bothered to write a review on just say this is out yeah because the whole system of like this is this is good or meh, meh or nah rubbish that's and then not justifying that because you've not yeah. got the space to yeah, justify yeah, yeah, that yeah. if you give something a bad review in a normal magazine yeah you've got a column to explain why yeah rather than just being so dismissive and it's that self appointed Again, righteousness. Yeah, yeah. Really, I really hate that. Really I I love the idea that um, time corrects those things though. Because uh, have you ever heard of the Rite of Spring? No. But it's by it's by Stravinsky. It's right. it's it's a ballet and it's yeah. it's dead good. It's written. It was it was written in nineteen thirteen, and there was there's you'll hear different stories about the opening night, but there was basically a riot. There was a fight. People were fighting because some people. The story, the sort of narrative goes that some people in the audience were like, this is baseful and distasteful and right. horrible and these sounds are crazy. And then there are other people who are like, no, this is the future. Right. And a fight broke out, you know, um, which is crazy to think. Like, I mean, yeah. imagine that happening at a concert. Yeah. Like, come on. But the thing about that piece of music, though, and people, the people on the sort of side of this is horrible, people would review it and say, this is just demonic sounds. This is just someone who doesn't, who is, is an, an untasteful, unartistic, horrible. On its 100th anniversary, it was played at the proms and they had like a whole prom dedicated to it. Like it's 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 classic fair now. Like you, you play yeah. it, You if you were in an orchestra, you'd probably play the right of spring. Yeah. Like it's become so commonplace within the orchestra world because it is an incredible piece of music. Yeah. But it's just so interesting to think that there were people trying to make sure it never got anywhere. Mm. And now it's like, well, it's, it's these people, ubiquitous with classical music. It's these people I'm talking about who have a set idea of how things should be done mm. and are almost aggressively against any variation on that. Yeah. And they will die and their ideas will die out with them. And you, you'd hope that. You'd hope that. Yeah. Because yeah. there, there are other examples I could give. Like, have you ever, uh, have, you, have you been to like a classical music concert where you've watched a multi-movement thing? Okay, no. no. So if you go and watch like a symphony... The tradition is if it's four movements after the first movement you after all the movements you don't clap right until the final chord until the final bit and then everyone claps okay. i don't like this i think that's stupid i right. think if you were to go let's say you went to go see roger waters playing the wall mm. okay imagine not clapping after every song yeah It'd be really weird. How right? many pieces are there within a movement? Um, no, no. So right. a movement, a movement is just like a piece of music. So right. like it's like so like uh, for example. So, so you, you don't clap after a movement. Yeah. Just at the very end of the whole thing. Yeah. So right. even though the movement will end, so you and then what happens is is that everyone in the audience goes <coughs> and like it's just horrible. It's yeah. just this sound of coughing and like people start laughing at the amount of coughing and then what's worse is that people who aren't into classical music might start to clap and then. A shushed, yeah. Oh, that boils my blood. Like, it's, oh, it just these traditions need to die yeah, out. Yeah, because it's ma- it makes it less accessible for people. Like, make it you can still have this same music, but in a modern setting yeah. and in and with a modern approach to it. And it's a, like when these things, th- these things that we call traditional. Yeah. Like you're saying with S- Stravinsky. Stravinsky. Yeah. I'm just checking it's right. Well, oh, I've actually got I've actually got him on my my phone. That's Stravinsky as drawn by Picasso. Sure, That's my phone case bought for me by my lovely girlfriend. Anyway, go on. Uh, yeah, got a girlfriend. Yeah, well done. Never thought that would happen. <laughs> Although you've had. I was going to say we get together for seven yeah. years, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, but oh, it's mid flow. What was I going to say then? It was going to be it was going to be beautiful. These things about traditions. Oh, so like in folk music, it's a similar example. It's like this, these songs that we're seeing, like the Roud collection and 
Cecil Sharp collection. These are what people nowadays consider, these are the traditional songs, these are the standards. Right. Someone wrote them. Yeah. Someone wrote them and probably someone would have heard them and gone, oh, that's not very good or whatever. It's like, the Beatles in 200 years will be traditional. Yeah, right. The songs yeah. we're writing now, you have to keep writing songs to become traditional. So we look at these folk songs, these traditional folk songs that tell the story of a time. And yeah, not a great time a lot of the time, but they told the story of it. So in 200 years time, if we're not writing songs now and moving that tradition forward, there are going to be no stories of these yeah. times in our tradition. Because yeah. pop songs aren't going to cover this stuff. They're not going to stay around. Mm. It's the songs that actually relate to, and I'm not just talking folk music now, it's songs that relate to the times we have now yeah. are the ones that will be of interest in a couple of hundred years. That's they so will survive. True. Yeah, because the ones, the ones of, if you look at the history of music and the most important moments that we still remember, are the moments where things change. Like it's, you know, Beethoven's Fifth or Stravinsky's Right Spring or, you know, uh, uh, goddamn like uh, John Coltrane, uh, who am I thinking of? Uh, Charlie Parker when he brought out his album. Like, you know, you, there are these big moments when the Beatles came on the scene. Like, you know, when you have these big moments of change, that's when the world, it's like, it's like, it's like a jolt, you know, you yeah. get jolt and, and then people, and then that sends a shockwave through history. <clears throat> and I feel like if you're, <clears throat> sorry, if you're just writing music that is just exactly in the vein of what came before and is not adding anything new to it, is it? is that going to do anything mm. but then but then there's there's another part there's a traditionalist in me that says well I like writing for symphony orchestras and symphony orchestras have been around for hundreds of years so am I doing anything new but at the same time I don't know I feel like I feel like I feel like the most new thing you can be is just yourself because we're yeah. always different absolutely you know like uh, I have very different sensibilities from my my parents and I have mm. very very different sensibilities from my grandparents yeah. and I can't even imagine how different my sensibilities are from my great great grandparents yeah. so I feel like if you are just writing the thing that is unique to you yeah. rather than trying <laughs> to do something different deliberately or yeah. trying to do what you're used to just do what feels right mm. and it might come out biased towards one of the sides but that's fine it's this deliberate avoidance of change or I suppose a deliberate attempt at change yeah sort of whenever yeah. Any, anything deliberate trying to be polarizing yeah i feel like that's insincere mm. but if you make something naturally that becomes polarizing absolutely fine yeah no no problem at all it's totally. just yeah don't try and force change it'll it'll happen it'll happen and then don't try and stop change either convert it, it oh yeah, yeah. It. don't yeah, don't totally. be scared of of doing things differently if that's how it happens totally yeah so Kieran, you are like amazing. Words right out of my mouth. Sexy. Just the 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 the, the height. You. you could you're a good height. Um. I oh, want to do that. Oh, you. I used to watch Most Haunted and the be um. <laughs> Most Haunted. Yeah, there was a guy on it who, whenever <laughs> oh, they did Most Haunted Live, when they did Most Haunted Live, he'd be sitting on the sofa, and they'd ask him a question, and the first thing he'd always do would be that, and then he'd talk about it. And then glasses back on. And it's like, why even have them on? Well, that's great. I, I just always loved it. I've always wanted to do that, and we've got proof. So there we go. There we go. It's on the podcast. What are you going to say? Yeah, I, I was, am. You are. So let's say you're like five years old. Right. Um, Not where I was expecting that question to go. <laughs> well, like I just my question really is like, how? Because when I was a little kid, I remember the moments where I started doing music. So, for example, I remember I was in an assembly when I was like, I, I was seven or eight, and I remember yeah. them saying we've got a saxophone teacher coming into school would anyone like to learn the saxophone and me and like three other kids in the hall would put our hands up yeah. and it was like yeah that sounds really cool and that's how I started the saxophone and then that's what got me playing in the orchestra at high school and then I decided drums were better so I did them and then yeah. so I'm just going to change pose please how what was the moment where no, you were because <laughs> really I mean you were like a, when you're like a folk champion by the time you got to high school yeah because I remember when you first came, I was in like year nine when you were in year seven. Yeah. But you come in and everyone was like, oh, there's this kid who's like this world folk champion or something. Yeah. Like. Because I've been in a sentinel. Yeah, totally. Local yeah. Paper. Well, I mean, Stoke is such a like. A, 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 it's, it's a bubble. It is a bubble. Yeah. It, it is. And once you think someone's big in Stoke. Yeah. Well. So what? You just want. So, like, how. There's, 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 there's a really hacky joke, which is like, oh. 
how did you want to learn the bassoon and you were five years old and you're like mom I really want to learn how to play that massive weird stick thing yeah like how do you decide are your parents super into folk or my dad yeah my dad is my dad's so from the sort of folk revival he was um, massively into folk music and um, always been into it he sells concertinas which are traditionally like folk musical instrument yeah yeah and all the stuff he would listen to was a Sorry, I don't know what happened then. <laughs> yes, just right. a lot of saliva that I couldn't contain. <laughs> a lot of emotion. Yeah, yeah. Um, when the he would listen to a lot of Irish music, and that's when I first started. I was listening in the car with him, and it was all these fast tunes, mm. and I thought, oh, this is this is cool. I like this. And then one day he came home from a folk festival where he'd been selling his instruments, and he he bought a fiddle for me, oh. like a violin. I think it was like a half size or a quarter size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just on the off chance and just said have a go at this if you want and it was never like I was forced into it I just picked it up and I was repeating things like when the saints go marching in and I was just list- I was trying to think how it went in my head yeah. and finding those notes mm. and that's how I was learning that's how you learn yeah, yeah. and so then I went on to the Suzuki method which taught me sort of playing by ear yeah. and I think I've, na- I've always naturally had a strong ear because yeah, I, I can read music now to a, to a degree, but I did a Kaylee gig a couple of weeks ago. Did you? And, yeah, and just, I had to read the notes. Yeah, yeah. And I, my brain can't keep up. Yeah. So I was really struggling, and I've got another one in a couple of days. Is, is it with the Kaylee yeah, band? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Is it really? No yeah. way, awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got it in a couple of weeks, maybe I might be on it. No, it's um, two days. It's Richard. Oh, is it Richard? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Hi, Richard. Hi, Richard. I'm sure we'll be listening to this. Did he was he on the last one? Yeah, yeah. We could talk about this out, outside the podcast. Yeah, that's probably fair. I know there's nothing. Yeah, no, who's gonna, yeah, it's basically doggy. one of those things like yeah. who's gonna care? There was no, yeah, that no, was yeah. Who that knows was who a, Richard is? Only Richard knows who Richard is. Yeah, there was nothing dodgy to say there. I was just wasn't particularly <laughs> interested. But, um, what did you do, Richard? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but then in a couple of weeks afterwards, I just listened to those tunes. Yeah. And now when I'm looking at the music, I just almost ignoring it and just hearing it in my head yeah and my, it's just muscle memory in here and then i started like copying the folk tunes i was hearing these irish tunes yeah started doing these competitions called the flaws and uh, this organization called cultus do them and yeah i won an, an all island which is essentially a world championship when i was 11 yeah and i still live off that it still goes in all the bios even though that was 12 years ago yeah and right. i was beating like 10 year olds yeah but, um, whilst you were 11 yeah yeah there's one there's this the reason the reason i heard that one year is because there was always a girl that would win every competition and she didn't show up that year um, really so I, yeah i won it oh wow it, it would have been tight i had a good yeah, year yeah, i yeah. played well i yeah. played well so yeah, yeah when, when yeah, i got to good. i remember yeah. when i got to saint joe's um which is our school um saint joe's mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i remember getting there and i just like the week before I got there, or the day before, I can't remember, I've been in the local newspaper. Right, yeah. So there were these kids who already like had seen me in it, and it said I was about to start at this. Right, this yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And it, it wasn't like, I'd almost love to have a story about being bullied and then triumphing. It was nothing like that. It was just people were like, oh, that's interesting. And then, that's, that's the weird thing, isn't it? Because it can go one of two ways, can't it? It could definitely, it could either be like, oh, there's that folk kid. Yeah, the- either idolised or despised. Yeah, it, totally. It could, it could have been either, but it was just a, oh, okay. Mm. And then I did that carol concert in, when I was in year seven. And you did Toss the Feathers, right? Yeah, I was asked to play Toss the Feathers by the cause. Well, their arrangement of it anyway. And just people went mad for it. And that was that's still one of the best nights of my life. That was an awesome. I have to say, yeah. what's, what was hilarious about it was that I swear there was like a year thirteen girl playing the fiddle with you. Yeah, Caroline. Was it Caroline Perry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, brilliant. She's a brilliant violin player. But I just I remember thinking to myself, that's gonna hurt. You know, like this 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 girl is like eighteen and she's about to go to uni to become to like I think she went yeah. to a conservatoire and there's this like little kid just like running circles around her. Well, it's. <laughs> I should have been running circles around me if I was doing classical music. It's very yes, cla- yeah, like yeah. classical violin and Irish fiddle are worlds apart. Yeah, and I see it now on the folk scene. If I see a singer songwriter or a folk band and the fiddle player has been asked by the mates just come and play, it's oh, it's easy. It's just this folk stuff. Oh, I can yeah. tell a mile away when yeah, someone's yeah, yeah. not been raised on folk because it's just a completely different style of playing. But mm. yeah, that that night was. 
I don't think I realised at the time, but that's that's when I wanted to start performing. Yeah, that, yeah. that's when I got a taste for. I played something. Mm. People were clapping all the way through, yeah. which I now despise. But different question. Mm. Um, and then I got like mobbed afterwards backstage by all these like older kids as well. Yeah, like, just, yeah. Like, Mate, that was incredible, and that was the first time I properly felt elated by playing music. Yeah, yeah. Before I'd had like I'd done a couple of gigs with my dad and. Um, like in village halls or something and people enjoyed it and like clapped and encouraged me or whatever yeah which is which is really nice but the people actually going wild yeah and i know part of it was the novelty of me being like tiny and i was in year seven and playing a fiddle that was bigger than me or whatever but also i think people hadn't heard that sort of music played like that before yeah totally and yeah that sort of shaped my whole experience at St. Joe's and my whole music experience as well. Well, St. Joe's as well, I mean, just so that everyone knows, we, we both went to St. Joseph's College. I think it's technically... Edmund Rice it's Academy Trust. Rice Academy Trust now, yeah. yeah. It, became a, it became an academy when we were in, like, year... Nearly, nearly closed when I was in year seven. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. the year, was it? Yeah, yeah. I just got in after, like, years of waiting to go there and yeah. then I thought it was going to close, yeah. But, um, but it was... We had some incredible music teachers. You know, yeah. Craig Gilligan, Derek Hurst, Julie Popple. Um, who would just uh, we did this we did a carol concert every year we did a summer concert every year and every year it was just amazing yeah and I and I remember it was like I remember the first year I got to play drums with the senior orchestra like properly I think it was like my year 11 mm. that I was the proper drummer for the orchestra yeah. I remember just being like oh, this this is amazing yeah. like I, every every concert was just like oh, yeah this is yeah. great because the arrangements were always meant and like it was just always such an amazing feeling and I feel like that there's no wonder there's at least one person from St. Joe's on the RNCM pop course every year. Yeah. Um, there's no wonder that there are people like James Wilson Reed or Emily Pond who are in London or Matt, Matt Bateman who are in London like performing and you know, Giles in China. You know, there are so many people I know. <laughs> it's no, we won't. Yeah, 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 it's pretty for other reasons. Yeah. Um, it, there's, there's no wonder there is so much musical talent come from there because we had such a great musical experience there, I think. Yeah. And I think... I, I would I would say I'm not I'm not necessarily saying that that means that the school was just incredible across the board it was good but at the same time it was because of music it, and it was because of music in a school where often music was disregarded and that's mm, that's what makes yeah. it even more incredible really yeah. because like it's the same in any school I think from what I hear from other people music education is dismissed as unimportant mm. and oh it's just for the people who can't be bothered doing something else and the fact that the teachers in that school, so your Craig's, your Julia's, your Derek's, your Chris's. Yeah, they're on Chris. Yeah. Um, they managed to get an environment where in their, in the larger school area, they weren't really appreciated, but they still had the passion and the drive to yeah. then still think, no, this is for the kids. This isn't for the school. This is for the kids. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say that like from personal experience Mr G but I know everyone will have had different experiences with different teachers yeah. like you and, and Derek Hurst will have yeah. been close as well because you did PA yeah. and music didn't I you? did PA and music yeah because um, I, I just loved music yeah. so much slash I was terrible <laughs> at every other subject <laughs> well yeah like, Mr G just I'd, I'd, I'd hate to think what I'd be doing now or with what I'd own. be like now he's just coming on the podcast by the way I'm interviewing is he? I'm interviewing oh him. can I come? Just co host. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Let's have a three way three way chat. <laughs> you started the word. Um, and then yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I, I um, but he is a massive mentor to a lot of people. I, I yeah. consider him a mentor. Yeah. Like, he is really like because there were there were times like my my Saint Joe's experience was sort of very up and down for various reasons. Yeah, yeah. And but mm -hmm. the one constant was when I would go in to, for performing arts lessons, Mister G would be there cracking jokes however dreadful yeah um and but just encouraging us all on a human level rather than just on an educational level yeah yeah and i hope he realizes how much impact that has on people and how they will remember it like people like you and me will remember that for the rest of our lives and yeah 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 i, yeah, I went to his because he's he's semi-retired now yeah um so he, he only works wednesdays thursdays fridays and i went to his like semi-retirement party and i, I remember writing in this card like i mean i guess it's kind of personal for me to say but like there was one line where I was like I, I think you, you may not realise this but there are probably thousands of kids across the UK because they've moved away from home yeah. um, 
who hold you in their hearts as like someone that they still look up to like a second father yeah or, or even even a first father yeah for, for some, some people yeah. yeah he's definitely he's definitely just and and Derek was was very much the same way for me as well like I would go into music class and you know especially at GCSE because GCSE you do more of the subjects and I, I remember just like being just not very good at some other subjects not ne- not necessarily because I'm dumb or anything I just didn't nothing grabbed yeah. me you know I'm not, passionate about it no but then I'd get into music and then he'd have he'd have like a he'd have a he'd have a dice a die and he would like throw it and then he'd be like right sing that note above the other note and it was just like this interactive yeah. cool I just I don't know I there was like I, I you know what the big tell is when you go and sit in a class and an hour takes forever yeah. you go sit in Derek's class or in Craig's class and it, it goes there, too quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you yeah. never, you never want it to end. You, you're there, like that was the hour. Yeah. That was, no, 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 no. We've got more to do. Yeah. Come up, what are you on about? Like, don't, don't lie. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. Like, it, well, that, I, I remember there was one, there was one year where I'd sort of, I'd had an argument with someone or something, okay. and I didn't want to hang out with like the group of friends for a bit. So I spent two <laughs> weeks like just in the music block yeah. by myself on a computer, and it's weird how, like that. Yeah, year nine that was, and then throughout the years willingly I'd be spending more and more time in the music but not yeah. to get away from anyone but to be with to the people be there yeah and the, the people who were like minded and sort of like all of my friends were there and it was it's a people it's, it's an, an interesting group who will occupy the music block yeah because it's people from all sorts of popularity when when that was a thing yeah, yeah. It, it is in school um, from all walks of life all popularities all sort of musical backgrounds but they just have this drive and this passion, and when you're around these people, it makes you more creative and it makes just it made just it just made me happier. Like Actually, that yeah. music block at that school, if that hadn't have been there, I don't know one if I'd have stayed for college no, there. No, me neither. Or two if I'd have, if it wasn't St. Joe's and the music staff at St. Joe's, I wouldn't be doing this job now. I, I don't know what I'd be doing. I mean, but. it might it might be a bit extreme to say, but like I, I feel like I'm a, alive because of music and yeah. I feel like I've got music because of Craig yeah. Derek and Chris yeah. and Julia like and I feel like yeah so I don't know I think that, that is a knock on effect like it's yeah. it's my job to do music now which is awesome um, and it's because I had amazing music teachers but if I hadn't have had them I, I don't think I could cope no. doing anything else that isn't no. this you know like no, uh, I, hear this, I hear the stories of like my sister she used to study music at school yeah yeah at like a different high school and just the how horrendous the music teachers were and then comparing them to what we had and I don't know, there were a couple of times in year 12 where I just I wasn't in a great place mm. not not like not in dire straits but yeah, just yeah, yeah. I'd lost a lot of uh, passion for things and I couldn't be bothered studying and I wasn't doing particularly well and I was so close to sort of giving it up yeah, and just saying, "Oh, this isn't for me. I'm gonna go do, do music." Because I was already gigging at that point. Yeah, yeah. But it was Mr. G who sort of said, y- "You'll regret not doing that." Yeah. Like you'll regret not having the rest of your experience here, and then not stu- not trying to study a bit. Because if I hadn't gone to uni, like even though I went for a year and a half, I still had some experiences there and yeah. met some people who like incredibly dear to me, and yeah. Without him, and yeah, each each person it started with, it started with Julia Popple. Yeah. Because she's the first person who my sister. I think she'd heard I was a musician from my sister who taught right, okay. at the school, and she was like, "Oh, Kieran, uh, perform a little bit bit for us, playing a few folk tunes in the mobile classrooms." I oh remember, my god, the mobile classroom! Well. Yeah, yeah. And then it was uh, her talking to Derek and saying we should get him involved with the carol yeah, concert. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And even though I I, I knew her for less less amount of time. Than, than yeah, Craig and Derek. RIP, I'm afraid. Yeah. yeah, just every stage from her to Derek to Craig all gave me a different stage of passion for music when I needed it. Yeah, all gave me the encouragement from Julia, the opportunity from Derek, yeah, and then the belief from Craig. Yeah, yeah, and boom, boom, the, boom. the perfect team. Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect team. It is now. Now I'm in your kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, the, now you've hit the top, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's funny. You're coming down. I was I was gonna say I've um I've actually I because you know I work at St Joe's. Yeah. I've actually quit 
Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I because I I just can't fit it in with my studies and all yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, and it's a bit of a hassle to go down once a week, but um, I just it's it's kind of hard to leave because once you I work I've worked there for a year and it's it's really weird because you just have so many positive memories of working in that block of yeah. like being in that block that you you are happy to just sit there in the block. You're just like this is where I became yeah. me, you know. Yeah. Um, and do you remember? Do you remember when were you in the meeting? Or yeah. The the the, the round table. table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, our old head teacher sort of hated the music block. Yeah, um, let's not go into it. Yeah, we're going that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so they there they, wasn't a strong relationship between the top of the school and the music department. No, which there is now, by the way, because the music department are the only department this year that have had like consistently good results. Oh, All really? the PA students have got distinctions, like. Wow. It's 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 one of those things where like I, I remember Craig told me that he got an e- email from the head teacher being like wow you guys are kind of the rock at the minute because you've all like, all the students oh, have done nice. well that's it's really nice, nice. Yeah. and um and yeah I remember that inter- that we they basically ordered like an unofficial offset inspection and I remember we were sat around this table talking to this guy and I remember I remember because I'm quite loud. Anyway, I well, was. I think you and I went in sort of like thinking we were the juggernauts. Yeah, totally. Like, we're, the, yeah. We're, the, we're the old boys. Yeah, we we know about some, yeah. some considerably older. Yeah, I was. But, I did an extra year. Yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, we were like, all right, you year sevens and eights, like you can yeah. have your say, but just le- leave it to us. And, and we, yeah. I remember we were firing all these things at him. He'd ask a question, and you and I would immediately pick up the rate in harmony. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas nice rapping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine us rapping? <laughs> let's not even try it because no. it's still going to end well uh, and probably rather insensitive and then yeah. so uh, but yeah. I remember distinctly like he would occasionally ask some of the kids around the room or, or I remember saying like see this kid here like I, I know her um, because like we go to orchestra together yeah. and we've got like 10 years apart she's like looking at you going oh, no idea yeah and who is this yeah. guy yeah well who in fact like the girl I'm thinking of in question has actually just finished the RNC no she's still at the RNC I think or she just finished I don't know who you're talking about um, Beth McLeary oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember because she played flute in orchestra oh she got another year I think oh she got another year yeah. the orchestra. okay yeah so like she so another success story from incredible the, singer yeah. a great singer in, um, and she was a great flute player at the time as well but I remember thinking like I remember saying like I know this girl who is six or seven years younger than me and I would consider her a friend because we play in the orchestra together that's what music does yeah, school, we're yeah. on an equal playing field. Like yeah. these kids, these kids here, we're all. I know all these kids. There was like one kid I didn't know that well, and I remember the last question. I remember he said, "Oh, I haven't heard from you for it was. I think he was in like year nine. He was, t- he was like tiny, tiny, and timid. Yeah, really. It was shy. like a film. It really was. It really yeah. was. And I remember the the guy saying like, "So what? What do you get from the music block?" And I just I can never forget what he said. He was like, "I." He said, "When I get to the music block." It's like I've got a family at school, and it's like, yeah, cool. And I then, we've spent an hour chatting at you. Yeah, that kid just told trying you everything. Really hard. Yeah, trying. Yeah. This kid just told you everything you need to know. Yeah, like. And didn't he apparently cry when he was uh, the Austin? The Austin. Yeah, yeah. I remember Derek when, told him, telling me he cried when he was like talking about. He said he waited ages to find a school that had a music block like this. Yeah. Um. So I yeah I, yeah going back to the fact that I've uh, quit. I remember Craig telling me. Who's gonna laugh at my jokes now? <laughs> like that's just, that's I'll a, go back. I'll, yeah. I would happily spend just a day of the week each week just listening just to in Craig's yeah. company in that music. <laughs> but I know what you mean about it being sort of hard to let go of. Yeah. Um. And it's it's weird because I don't. I think if people who didn't do any music at that school, like people, my friends in in my year, if they knew like. That I go back every now and get and now and again. They just find it completely ridiculous. Yeah, but I don't think I've got plenty of friends who would not go back yeah. and see like a science teacher. Oh no, but I I, I go back because I still can't let it go. Yeah, I'm even I'm writing a TV show about, you know, about yeah totally, about yeah. the school and the yeah, music yeah. department um, and that especially has brought back a lot of memories and yeah. a lot of nostalgia and maybe even more of a pr- appreciation for the teachers there and all the people like my friends and everything and just thinking how what an easy time it was in comparison but at the time it was everything yeah it was and it? Yeah. It, yeah I think it shaped definitely for me and it sounds sounds like for you as well it definitely shaped the way I look at life yeah in that music block I experienced everything in that music block mm. I experienced like 
making friends, fancying someone, yeah, yeah, being broken up with, yeah, yeah. or like being in love with someone, or going on tour, going on tour, yeah. or having an argument with someone, or a disagreement about who's more important, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, all like these that, yeah. things, like yeah. all these things that you will encounter in life, happen there. in that orchestra. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and it's a beautiful thing, but it's also like yeah, like we say, just it's hard to move on. From. And I don't feel it like is. I got that experience at university either. Like no, that's the thing. I, no. I, I had a really good three years and I came out with like a first in music from a Russell Group Uni. So like yeah. qualification point of view, incredible. Um, point of view of like camaraderie, because you had so many kids, like I was the only kid in my year from my school, obviously that's probably the case for every single university in the country really. But like, it's just like there are these kids who come from other schools who have completely different sensibilities about music yeah. and life in general and it's just kind of hard to yeah. You, you try and reform it like I started I remember starting an orchestra when I was there and I was like oh this will be like senior orchestra at school um, and it and it just kind of wasn't it was kind of like I was there pushing it and it's still going like even yeah. though it's like three years since I graduated it's that that orchestra is still yeah. one of the main orchestras it's still quite like uh, you know you've, you've kind of you, you really really start to think this was so much better when I was just a high school yeah um, and another thing as well, like I remember, I was I was not very popular at school. Like I was, I was fat. I liked I walked around with like my dad's sci-fi books from the sixties in my pocket, my blazer. Like I was super, like lone gun, lonely, weird kid. Yeah. Um, and you know, not that many friends. And of the friends I had, they could probably quote Monty Python better than they could quote, like anything else, like pop songs. Yeah. But. It's what's really weird is the perception because from year seven I was that. But then if you talk to people who came in sixth form, for example, um, Amy and some of her mates, yeah. like they kind of saw me as like a popular kid. And it was really yeah. weird because it's like, no, I was popular in the music block and everyone knew me because I would play drums in assembly or for masses yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. So like, and in the concerts. So I was, was popular in a way, but it was kind of like that, you know, when like a frog, is it like the frogs in water that slow boils? It doesn't notice. Is it like a lobster or something? Oh, I don't know. I oh, don't yeah. Know. yeah. We probably should not be boiling yeah. things alive. No, that's not. Yeah, that's, that's just not good. It's kind of bad, really. Yeah. Uh, I'll still eat meat, but just don't boil it alive. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, I feel like there is a, there is that point of which you get to that weird level of popularity, but you didn't notice it because you were too, having too good a time, and that's kind of how you get. Yeah. That I think, I think that's how you become successful. It's not because you wish for success necessarily I'm, 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 I'm paralleling from somewhere very different but I feel like it's definitely a case of like you get to that point where you want to be just because you're in it yeah you're just involved in the thing you know you're not worried about the final yeah. outcome you're well, just doing it well this is my experience of it is when I when I went to St. Joe's I was just like very average like mm. I had friends I didn't really have any enemies or anything and it was just like just plodding along and even even when I was in like college, where we'd have lunch times and there'd be loads of tables in the whatever the study building was called, I can't remember. Oh yeah, Stan, and I I just House? yeah, yeah. Uh, no um, oh the fidelity, fidelity yeah, yeah. and I would just like jot around between groups. Yeah, and I didn't really have like a, a really close group because you guys had all gone. Oh, I realised yeah, yeah, that, course, yeah. but I I wouldn't have changed that for the world because I maybe I don't know. I was never popular, hmm. but the way I did music, people sort of acted differently around me. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. It had some sort of esteem, uh, prestige around it. I don't know. I can't really well, explain it. just respect. It. it was just kind of like, oh, wow, you're so. really good at that thing. I think so. Yeah. Um, but when I got, by the time I got to year 12, I was with a group of friends, even though you were all like the year older, yeah, year above me. Um, it was just the happiest that I'd ever been because... I was with a group of people who I just absolutely loved all of you mm. and I feel like some people can go through school and never find that connection with people because they don't understand what they're passionate about either themselves yeah, or someone they don't else find is passionate themselves. about yeah, yeah. and we were all lucky enough to to have that one thing in common and yeah it's great that was yeah. a weird thing about Fred Chico actually there was no like there was no one I didn't like that we hung out with no no like, everyone because like that everyone that, had their own little quirks but totally yeah. and, and, the, and like the and, and you kind of accepted that you're Disneyland like, Disneyland oh my god yeah. like one of the best holidays I've ever been on yeah we went life. to Disneyland um, can I just say yeah se eight like how old were we so the youngest of us you were the youngest I was 17 right? you were 17 I was 18 or 19 
Will, I think, was like 50, I don't know. Um, and then, like, yeah, he was the bass player, he was from out of school. But, yeah. um, there, so all of us were like 17 to 19, and we went on like a group trip to Disneyland eight of, Paris. Was it eight of us? It was eight of us, yeah. Best time of Best my life. Best thing ever. That it was, was just mid. Was it's, it's a place where you can just be completely yourself. Yeah. And I just, nothing's too daft. No, exactly. You just have fun, and it was brilliant we had to like because there's so many jokes that we came around there you yeah know, like, the boob, you know things like that oh, just things yeah. that we did and just like <laughs> i've forgotten about that it was just so oh the, no the, the best thing that i still think about now it's like when i was writing when i started working my tv show i was like going through all these big occasions in my yeah, life yeah, and yeah. disneyland was one of them and the story i remembered was like <laughs> it just writes itself because um andy who is uh a, a oh, smaller yeah. guy, yeah. like a small, like a love, loveliest man in the world. Yeah, but he's quite a bit smaller than you. Yeah, so he's, he ran he's like into, five, five. I think, yeah, he yeah. he ran into a bedroom and jumped on the bed, and then he, Eden ran in. Who's a wait, few, wait, let no, me no, 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 no. He, he's like a few stone heavier than Andy. He does this yeah, massive like swan f- dive, and we all just hear this massive crack throughout the building. It breaks the bed within ten seconds of being what? there. From Giles, that was amazing. The way Giles saw it apparently is that like Andy ran and jumped on the bed in that room, and then apparently like turned to look at me. This is the way he describes it. He turned to look at me, and then saw my face light up, and I ran upstairs, and he could just hear like a <laughs> yeah. crunch, yeah. and then. Uh oh! Immediately afterwards, this was in like a minute of being in this house we were staying in. Oh my god! Yeah, that's yeah. like no, that was that was. I you know if you could relive like a week of your life, it would be was, that week. That would absolutely be it for me. Yeah, and which is yeah. yeah, it's so funny because we definitely if you think about the function as like a a business, we definitely lost money because the amount oh, of money yeah. we made we from the four <laughs> gigs we did definitely yeah. doesn't make up for the four days we spent. I, did, I think I did one gig for 50 quid with the function yeah, I think, and yeah. uh, spent like 300 on going to Paris <laughs> and all the time that I wasn't gigging and I was playing in that um, in Chelliston rehearsing hmm. like, yeah, there was a lot of dedication for no money Yeah, for no I wouldn't have changed it for anything no, totally. it was brilliant because we turned up, because it was like Andy's like dad's business building wasn't it and like we'd turn up on like a Saturday morning and like we'd rehearse and then we'd go to like somewhere for lunch yeah. and then we'd come back and we'd just be just practicing and it was just like oh it was amazing and making good fun. music as well good music. like because like, just Lisa one of my favourite singers ever like incredibly lucky to work with her she said yes to coming on this podcast but we haven't organised a time yet so I hope I hope I can I don't care this. yeah I'm just letting you know do, do that do you do your own organisation in your own time mate no, I'm not. I'm, no, this I'm is just, the Algar time. This is the this is the Algar time. I've been too focal, was mate. I'm too focal. There'd be more than that by now. I don't know. Oh yeah, I've really I've really dropped off in the last few years. Really, <laughs> really, really dropped out of popularity. What I love yeah. about it is every time we ever talk about your career, it always comes back to me and Gary Barlow. I met Gary Barlow. Yeah. You met um, Gary Barlow. Yeah, we did this Radio Two concert, and it was after we'd won the Young Folk Award, Greg and I. And First time or second time? Well, you can't win the Young Folk Award twice. I thought you could. Won the Horizon Award the second time. I didn't know that. I've every time I ever put you in a bio, I've always said the two-time winner of the BBC. Well, that's, the, that's easy to put that. But oh, right. yeah, Horizon's better than. But anyway, so we were put on this Radio Two concert, and yeah. the, the bill was like us, Jamie Cullum, and then Gary Barlow, which was so bizarre. That's bonkers, isn't it? But I went and had a picture with him, and I didn't realise I was interrupting a conversation he was having with someone oh no way I asked the person who I'd interrupted to take the picture of me with him oh and then like straight after straight after he walked off and said no more pictures and went to his dressing room but I got the picture and got at least 300 likes on social media so yeah good day self worth yeah good day yeah great day Um, yeah best mates me and Gaza let's wrap this up so um, have you got any is the Tweed Project releasing we're just we're just releasing an EP yeah so I don't know when this is this is coming out probably in like a month or so maybe okay yeah we'll have released it by then so what's the release date uh, the 18th of October Um, okay well if it hasn't if this comes out before then on the 18th of October you're releasing an an EP an EP yeah so the, the Tweed Project is a collaboration between Three English traditional musicians and three Scottish traditional musicians. Oh, awesome. Um, so we've got bagpipes as well. And I love playing with bagpipes. Fiddle and bagpipes because it's the same frequencies. Yeah, It's yeah, just yeah. such a tight combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we're, we're, I'm really, really proud of that EP. Awesome. It's, I think it's the best thing that I've been on recording-wise. Yeah. And so yeah, that's that's coming out in October. Yeah. Um, 
should be new duo and Lost Boys albums next year. Next year, yeah. yeah. There's no sort of dates in mind. We're not started working on them, but it's in the pipeline. It's in the pipeline. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna try and cut down gigging a bit next next year. And take it a bit easier because I've had a lot. I've done a lot this year. Really. It's been, I counted up the other day. It's like 220, 230 gigs or something. Oh my Jesus! And that's a lot. It really takes it out of you. And yeah. I don't want to lose a love for it. No. I don't want to. St- I don't want to go on stage. If I ever get on stage and I'm playing to a big crowd and getting and they're loving it, if I ever get to that stage and I'm not feeling anything, then I've got to stop doing it because it's yeah. not fair. Yeah. It's yeah. not fair for me to be in that position and, and not enjoying it. But and not fair for the audience as well. No, it's, it's not fair. No, all around, it's it's just not an ideal situation if someone's obviously not into it. Um, and that's not the case at the moment. I just feel like if I keep working as hard as I am. Well, it's not. It's not. It's not about working hard. It's working hard for the right things. Yeah. Cause there have been some things I've done this year that have just been sort of like, why, why did I waste, why did I waste my time doing that? And yeah. Yeah. You don't want. You want to minimize as many no. gigs as that. I mean, you're in the very. I would suggest fortunate position of being like you're playing, in pretty much all original, stuff. What do you mean? As in, like you're not in a covers band. No, oh, no. Yeah. Whereas I play yeah. like weddings yeah. in like covers bands and stuff, and it's like. It does get disheartening after a while because it's like, oh my god, there's only so many times I can play with Tam Funk. But I tell you what, though, I, I did, I did the Kaylee gig. I did. Yeah. There was something really weirdly nice about playing music without being, without anyone caring what I was doing. Yeah, or without you being a name. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna say that I'm a name. Like on the folk scene, I suppose. You're definitely a name on the folk I, scene. I, I like suppose. I've I've met I've met people on gigs and been like, have you ever like fiddle yeah. players? Been like, you heard of Kieran Algar? They're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah. Quit well, uh, yeah, it's sort of like there's no pressure. There, I can I could have an awful gig at a Kayla gig, yeah. which I didn't have a particularly great one last time because I I broke a string at the start of a dance and then had to improvise for ten minutes. But and that was that was torturous. Do you remember which dance it was? Uh, it was the last one. Oh, the um, Sugar Willow? Yeah. That's like the longest one. Yeah, I improvised the whole thing. Oh, dear. And I was trying yeah. But anyway, so like I had a gig there where I was thinking I I did not show myself off in a good light there. Yeah. But then there was such a nice moment where I thought, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, those people are never going to see me again or never going to... If they do, it's not going to be in that capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I can just be a musician and have fun with it and have none of the pressures of oh well people will stop listening to us if, if we do if I have a bad gig here or whatever and all of that pressure is just completely taken out of it and whilst I would become numb from that eventually yeah. if that was all I was doing it's, it was a nice moment to make me realise oh it's just nice to play music for playing music I always wonder about like you know like famous classical soloists so there's people like I guess I don't really want to name names but there are people like I, I can't imagine Nicola Benedetti or Yo Yo Ma or Jess Gillum, who's currently quite big, or Shekhar Khan Mason. I can't imagine them just joining an orchestra now yeah. because they're like the soloist. Yeah. They play at the front, but if their popularity wanes, it's kind of difficult for them to just shrink into the orchestra because it's like, oh no, you're not meant to be in the orchestra anymore because you're Yo Yo Ma. But I bet they would love it. I, yeah, exactly. I That's the thing. Were, I bet they would yeah. like to just be playing violin too. Yeah, you know, like they just, yeah. want, you know, they that don't. That was my safe space back in uh, in year ten. <laughs> violin yeah. too. When I got upgraded to violin one, that was really troublesome. <laughs> I, I, my, saw, I my, saw your folder the other day. With oh your, god, with, I need to take that. I need to get that back. You should. You should get it. So yeah, we had the, our music folders for orchestra. Me and James, who was like my desk partner for years. Yeah. Um, we well, I photoshopped our faces onto these film posters and stuck it in and it's I went back a few months ago and it's still there it is still there I and was it was still the happiest moment just, it's brilliant it, it's oh, so funny I loved it <laughs> why can't I be back in school yeah because I'm 23 that's probably one of the reasons yeah 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 and also you're supposed to move on in your life not just cling on to the past for the rest of the time but yeah yeah anyway what are your socials what are you like so I'm on twitter at Kieran Algar yeah or the Tweed Project is at the Tweed Project band yeah or Greg Russell and Kieran Algar are at Greg or Kieran A nice Sam Kind of Lost Boys are at the Lost Boys and then we've got Facebook yeah all those pages at the Tweed Project and whatever yeah, yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram Kieran Algar Music nice or Kieran Algar is my personal one if you're feeling fruity but there's no music stuff on that one no um, what else have I on uh, you're on YouTube still 
Oh, I've got a YouTube, but it's, it's remained pretty much untouched. Hmm. I've always wanted to do some things on there, but just never got around to it. That's well. I mean, that's it's just hard, yeah. It's hard for me to start things off because I'm just never at home. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like, I get an odd day or two here, but obviously I just want to do nothing. So hmm. maybe next year I'll start creating. I've got ideas for content. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, keep an eye out for my TV show, which is uh, absolutely going to be made within five years. Five to what? Twenty? Five to twenty? Yeah. No, no, no. I, five to six years. Um, it's going to get commissioned, and it's going to be on BBC. Um, I don't know one or two yet, <laughs> but it's definitely it's going to happen, and it's going to not three. This is going to be on terrestrial television. This oh, is not hundred percent. This is no, one no, or two. Mate, this is going to be bigger than the office, and you can. I'm glad. I'm glad we got this recorded. This TV show that I'm going to make. Um, and th- they'll find this clip and play it on Graham Norton when I'm being interviewed one day but this show is going to be an absolute like it's going to change the scene of how TV's done amazing well thanks for coming in I'm going to write more than one episode first I that probably would help yeah I'll, I'll show you the episode okay yeah yeah, yeah cause we have that session here where yeah we're brain, yeah. Yeah, brainstorming we won't get into that on here yeah anyway yeah do we how do we hit I guess we just. Stop. Thanks for having me. Sorry, mate. Oh, 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 no. oh, we do like. Oh, oh, okay. This is definitely being edited out. I'm really well, no. <laughs> Just a lovely shot. I'm not a fan oh, of this. Calm down. Okay. Oh. Hey. Right. right. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Cool. Well, yeah. Thanks for having me. And, and remember, kids.